So we need to know what to, what's up with our money. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, you got to, in this country, follow the money all the time. Don't sleep at all because uh, the way the economy is going, you never just know, do you? Nah. Because nah. <laughs> you, get, you get to the supermarket. What I used to buy with 5,000 and I'll come with two bags. Yeah. I get home, I'm asking myself, ah, what did I buy? Yeah. You mean this is just this for 5,000? So where are we heading? You can't go to the supermarket these days with with the with you know back in the days if you go with a hundred thousand naira and you have like and maybe three months shopping yeah, exactly. groceries but now that's like two weeks uh, but even at that you still go to to supermarkets and then you see you see queues and you see a lot of cars parked and you wonder if maybe there's a party going on there anyway that's Nigeria for you <laughs> all right Lagos um, so last week. Um, for those who are very interested in, in exchange rate matters and what's going on with the Nigerian Naira, it's been a seesaw uh, over the last um, few months. Yes, yeah, since the unification of the Naira, uh, we've seen the exchange rate go from um, six something to, you know, 900. Uh, last week, by the way, last week uh, on the 9th of November, uh, the exchange rate between the Naira and the dollar, the official market, official market is called NAFEM, um, was, you know, traded as high as 996.7 Naira to the dollar. 996, that's the highest ever recorded. Uh, before then, the highest we had was, I think, 993, and that was 30th of October. Uh, but now we're seeing 990, we saw 996. And then guess what? The next day, Friday, the 10th of November, it closes at 780. How do you go from 996 to 780 in one day? I, I just, I'm just curious. I, it's just some things that you really can't explain about, you know, about Nigeria's Forex market. And then you tend to wonder, how do you like, so who are the guys who bought at 996? And, you know, how do they feel now that the next day some other people are buying for 780? Just... You know, sounds kind of kind of strange. Meanwhile, intraday because they do have intraday intraday um, um, rates. Intraday rates are typically rates that the exchange rates are, um, are sold for during you know trade, like during trade. So I mean, the closing rate is a different rate from uh, maybe your intraday highs or intraday lows. In case you didn't know that, yeah. So um, it did close at seven eighty on Friday. Uh, which remarkably was a huge gain, but intraday high, which means some people actually bought at one thousand and ninety six on Friday. So someone has got to ask the FMDQ, which is where FX has been traded officially. What is going on? How come you're having intraday highs at one thousand ninety six, and then the market is closing at at seven eighty, and then the day before it closed at nine ninety six. So that's some arbitrage there in case you don't understand. So basically, because it's like you go into you go into a market and then you buy something for a thousand naira, and then that same day somebody else buys it for seven eighty. So what's the magic? Exactly. <laughs> what's the magic? It's magic, isn't it? Yeah. Because <laughs> I was magic. still cheated. If I got it for one thousand seven six and the other person got it for seven eight six, and I'll be asking, uh, why? What's did the I, magic? Why did I, I, I wait? That's what we don't really understand. And, and somebody just has to explain this uh, to us. Why do we have such volatility uh, in, in, in the official FX market? Because that affects confidence a lot. So let me just give you a rundown of, of the exchange rate since 1st of November. This is the official market. 1st of November, 786. 2nd of November, 793. 3rd of November, 776. 6th of November, 809. The next day, 7th, 869. On the eight, eight seventy four, on the nine, nine ninety six, and then it drops to seven eighty. All right, let's clarify this rate you're talking about. Is this the parallel market? No, official rate. This is the official. That rate. is the official rate. So if it's like that at the official rate, yeah. What is it like at the parallel market? So good question. So at the parallel market, rates are a little bit more. You know, you have different rates, so you really can't be sure. So I, we don't like to call them rates at, at Naira metrics. We like to call them. Quotes, yeah, quotes basically, because anybody can quote anything for you. Mm-hmm. So the quotes we're seeing is that about a thousand one, a thousand one fifty, depending on whether you're buying cash, whether you're buying what they call inflows. So inflows are, are typically, you know, transfers. And but 
they're fairly within you know reasonable band that you can expect and and so the thing with fx is that you want to be sure that the disparity between the official market and the black market rates are not wide open. We've always had very huge disparities or premiums, as as as, as, you, as they call it. Uh, premiums globally should be between five and ten percent is acceptable, right? But in Nigeria, you had premiums of has thirty five percent between twenty and thirty five percent. The Mayfield period was like thirty five percent. Um, when it was when the official rate was like 440 for a long time or 460 and then black market rate was like seven something um, but now it's still high at about 25 percent so what we thought was going on last week was that premium was now being you know reduced the disparity was being reduced so that the official the rate yes yeah, the gap was essentially closing uh and so it was at 990 96 and then you know the black market was one thousand one, and like looks like okay, it looks like the gap is closing, which is good because you want that gap to close. Because if the gap does not close, what happens is that somebody else goes to buy from the official market at seven eighty mm-hmm. that it closed on Friday, and then you sell at the parallel market at one thousand one fifty. Is that what you call round tripping? That's round tripping okay. essentially. So you don't want that. So that's why. You've got to always watch that disparity because you don't want, you know, that gap to be wide. It has to, you know, close. So, but with what is going on in the official market, it's difficult to really understand why you have that sort of volatility, why it just goes up and down like like that. That's that sort of wide margin. And by the way, there was a company that paid dividend on, announced dividend last week, uh, oil and gas company, Seplat, by the way. And and Seplat said they were going to pay because Seplat pays dividend in dollars. And... When is that they, right? Yeah, yeah, it's right. They, they they report in dollars. They make money in dollars. Mm-hmm. So even though they do pay in Naira, they pay the dividends in Naira, converting at an official rate. Okay. And so the official rate they quoted was 996 because that was the official rate at the day. And then the next day, it's 780. So these things do have implication. And that's why, um, you know, we, we just worry that um, what's happening, you know, at the NAFM, it's not just too clear to a lot of people. We just like to see that nothing, um, you know, it'll fix itself. Anyway, so that same day, um, turnover at the NAFM was eighty-four, uh, uh, eighty-four million dollars. And turnover for the whole week at the NAFM was just around five hundred and eighty-four million dollars. Turnover, by the way, doesn't mean that that's the amount of dollars that was sold. It's just the amount of dollars that went around. So if I had one million dollars and I sell to you and you sell back to me. Uh, turnover is $2 million, essentially, right? So turnover for the whole week is $584 million, which is a gauge of whether there's liquidity in the offshore market. So it doesn't seem that there's so much liquidity uh, yet, uh, but um, it's in line with uh, the average that we've seen over the last, um, you know, five or six months or so since we introduced the unification of the Naira. So that's it on Forex. So with this yo-yo, how are we going to get to now some stability and you're confident because there was some excitement when everybody starts saying could drop yeah you know it's dropping and all then all of a sudden it's back again so how do we now mitigate this yo-yo effect and have some stability so you can plan now you can't delay gratification because you don't know especially <laughs> with the way for it is what you're if you're dealing with forex or you know you can't delay gratification because you never can tell where it will swing yeah how, how it, do we now have some stability well, it all so it's it, it it all has to do with market transparency. I uh, want to see a bit more transparency uh, in the market. Let someone try to explain to us why you have such huge disparities in you know in the official market. So the closing rates are usually way lower than the intraday high rates, and even the intraday low rates. There's just a huge disparity. So we don't know who's buying at such low rates, who's and then who's buying at, at you know that kind of high rate. So we just need a bit more transparency. Uh, you know, for us to understand, or someone just come out and explain. Anyway, moving on. Um, even though we're still on forex, um, the government went to Saudi Arabia uh, last week, and a high delegation. The president went there himself with you know some people in the private sector, and we've got some good sound bites. Um, Saudi said they were uh, the pledge to support Nigeria with FX and also revamp um, the refineries. So. Uh, to what extent, we don't know. Details are not fully out yet. Uh, but 
um, Prince Bin Salman, uh, who is the Crown Prince, did uh, also, um, you know, speak to you know some of these things. He says that he he commends the economic reforms of, of the president and then expressed their commitment to support the reforms um, by enabling Nigeria to reap the full benefits. And so um, we don't know how much Forex they want to bring, but please, man, we've been hearing all this Forex, and people are beginning to say it's audio Forex. I don't know whether that's true, but I mean, but uh, we got to be positive and hope that we're going to have some money come in and pretty soon, because we do need dollars uh, if we, we're going to have exchange rate stability. Uh, we do need dollars. Um, by the way, um, the central bank, as we reported sometime a couple of weeks ago, have been paying back uh, some of those effects, uh, you know, that have been that they've been owing Nigerian banks. So they have paid a lot of those backlogs, and so it looks like we are at the first step or the first stage of FX liquidity. And so let's just hope that you know that continues, and then we can have some stability. A lot of people who thought that you know the exchange rate was going to keep dropping, you know, at some point it was like one thousand, slightly over a thousand there, and we're like, wow, uh, finally it's strengthening. But it looks like it's going back up. Uh, we don't know what it's going to look like this week, but we can only hope that uh, things are a lot better uh, this week. Yeah, and um, the Saudi Saudi trip, um, it's important uh, that the government continues to engage um, foreign foreign investors. Uh, it's Most times uh, we do engage foreign investors. We don't really tend to see significant impact on FDIs. I mean, the records are there. You can go and check FDIs over the last 10 years. It's never really moved that much. Uh, compared to FPIs, what we tend to see is foreign portfolio investors. And because foreign portfolio investors prefer to come into Nigeria because uh, it's easier when you come into Nigeria, you're not investing in infrastructure, you don't need to wait too long for your return. Um, it's mostly in treasury bills or in OMO bills or, or bonds. And that often gives you high interest rates and you can just get your money out. That's why it's called hot money inflow. Um, so it looks like I don't know if that is what Saudi is looking at. Uh, we hope not. We hope it's real investments, uh, provided that the government is also ready uh, to, you know, make ease of doing business for a lot of organizations because that's really the problem. Most times, ease of doing business is not there, so they just want to leave uh, the country like we've been seeing. Uh, just last week, we there was a company that, that said that it was not, I don't want to mention their name, uh, but it's, it's on our site. Um, they were, they were going to stay off distribution of of their pharmaceutical products uh, they didn't want to do that anymore so essentially they're just packing their bags and leaving but shouldn't this be a challenge for us though with this saudi you mentioned saudi is operating in oil we are operating in oil as well mm-hmm. they've sort of seen ahead and conserved their funds shouldn't it be an opportunity for us to to learn about how they've conserved their funds over the years and we can also be courted as a bride to come invest <laughs> In other economy. Uh, you know, the funny thing is that Nigeria has never lacked um, policies. Mm. It's always policy implementation. So uh, there's really no magic Saudi has done that, that we haven't done. Uh, the key thing really is whether we can uh, continue to uh, produce, um, you know, crude oil, which is the main thing that, that, that we do produce at the sort of rates that would require uh, us to meet enough, enough uh, to meet our forex targets. Uh, or our revenue targets. And and so that's what they've been doing pretty well. Um, it's the largest crude oil producer in the world. And, and for for, how, for that kind of small country, they have so much, you know, crude oil uh, that we don't. Uh, uh, Segwaying into, in, into crude oil production, um, it's a story uh, that, we, that we wrote um, last week. Um, said crude oil in Nigeria, crude oil production, uh, I think hit one point, uh, I hope I'm correct, 1.5. I think million barrels, um, you know, per day, or, which is significant. Um, I don't think we've we've been anywhere close to those levels uh, in a long time. And 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 the the due to surprise you to note that the defense minister, defense minister also came out uh, to say that uh, you know that we're going to hit 1.9 million barrels per day. By the end of the year, I don't know how that's going to happen. What did you say we hit just now? Yeah, I think we're at um, 1.5, uh, according to the NMPC. NMPC said we hit 1.5 in October, which is quite remarkable because uh, we haven't been you know, close to those sort of numbers in a while. It's always been 1.1, 1.2. If we're to estimate, um, what percentage of our capacity is that? Yeah, so typically, budget-wise, we should be doing 1.8, 1.8. 
one point. There was a time the target was 2.2 million barrels. Um, people would say Nigeria has the capacity to do 2.5, uh, even though we haven't done that. I don't think we've ever hit those sort of numbers. Ever? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure we have. Uh, at least in, in recent times, since since we've been tracking numbers, and we've been tracking this data for, for almost 20 years, I'm not sure I've seen 2.5. Uh, but 1.8, we used to do that, 1.8, 1.9 uh, million barrels per day. Um, and then, you know, it would all drop to an all-time low uh, at, at about 1 point, 1 point, uh, less than 1 million barrels per day at some point. But now they're saying uh, that in the month of October, the country produced 1.3 crude oil for 1.3 million barrels per crude oil for 8,000 blended condensates and 163,000 unblended condensates which, you know, adds up to about 1.5 million barrels uh, per day. And now um, the defense minister is saying that we could do one. Here's what he says. This is words. We are hoping that at the end of this year, we will reach about 1.9 million million barrels per day. Uh, We are taking serious action. Operations have been concluded in that area. So they're fighting oil theft. And Mm -hmm. and a lot of people have said oil theft is one of the reasons why uh, we keep seeing, uh, you know, it dropping, it dropping our uh, crude oil uh, output, and that also affects crude oil revenue and also affects FX. So, and I think they should take a cue from Saudi Arabia as well. You know, there's a, this room in Saudi Arabia because that I saw yes. where they were actually monitoring the oil wells and seeing the ongoing action. So, if there's an attack, there's a warning beforehand that look, somebody is meddling somewhere. I think we should have that kind of situation room as well. We need we need to up our game if we want to really get to that level because we have it, don't we? Of course, of course. I mean, those things exist, and like I said, and that's why um, if you you know a lot of times people tend to say that what we've had in Nigeria, uh, you know, as far crude oil uh, is organized theft and organized crime, like to say mm-hmm. uh, when you and when people say organized crime, what they're essentially saying is that uh, it's a crime between the people who you know, should be protecting. It's not petty. Yeah, so it's not like there's just someone who just goes, isn't, yeah, he's, he's, he's just good and just go and steal crude. No, it's, it's organized. So they know the answers to these things and they're not just doing it. And that is the problem. Now, um, segue into one story that, that something that kind of caught my attention. I, I don't know if it's true, but uh, the national president of the Mieti Ala Cattle Breeders Association, you know, there's so many associations, because you know that, right? M-A-C-B-A-N, uh, said that Nigeria spends around 1.7 billion yearly, that's dollars, on importation of milk. Um, difficult to really believe that data. Uh, but he does say, you know, there's a lot of importation of milk and that uh, we should cut that importation off. And um, I don't know. Produce our own milk? Yeah. I mean, it's possible. I there's think. been a lot, a, a lot of talk in that direction, but we haven't just really seen that. Uh, happen as much as you know we would want to, but that's what he's saying. Uh, I was reading social media comments on this yesterday, and a lot of people sort of disparaged it. They didn't believe that that we're anywhere close to that. That we're in terms importing of that much. Yes, of um, of crude oil, but um, crude oil I mean, or milk? You mean? <laughs> sorry, of milk. Ah, crude oil has entered my head. <laughs> crude oil. Uh, by the way, it's still on crude oil. Uh, Dangote Refinery um, said it's, sec- it's securing it's secured the license to refine over. 300,000 barrels of crude daily. Um, there has been concerns over whether uh, Dangote Cement has actually received uh, crude oil so that it can start producing from crude, from its refinery. Um, we are hearing that, yes, um, looks like a deal has finally been done and uh, crude oil uh, would uh, be available very soon. That's what Dangote himself said. Because there was a last uh, But headline. very soon is not really like, you know, it's not like tomorrow <laughs> or next week. It's not definitive. Uh, Did you see he the says, headline that said about importing crude uh, so for him to refine? There was some yes. things that made... Uh, yes, you yes. Know? And I was like, how does that... Uh, how logical is that? Because we have crude oil. Now he's going to import to refine. At the end of the day, we're back to square one. Yeah, we, we had that, but uh, I mean, I, I don't think that, you know, for national security reasons, the government would even want that. Oh. Uh, yeah, uh, we do have, I mean, crude oil is well produced here, even though some people would say that it's cheaper. We make more when we export than when we sell to him. That's also another, you know, argument that, that some people will, will make. 
Uh, but he's expecting 300,000. He's gotten approval to refine it. Uh, let's hope that he gets it. Look, uh, to be honest, I really don't care where, where he gets his crude from. So long as he's been able to refine and we start to see a lot of that refined petrol or refined product in, in the economy. And we're no longer importing because when we don't import, uh, then we get we tend to save um, badly needed dollars uh, that we can all use to import other essential items mm-hmm. uh, rather than import, you know, um, um, petroleum products. So we really want him to start. So with this quantity, how how far would that go? Um, with, the so pe- with the people, he he's um, his refinery. Um, um, has a capacity of 650,000 uh, barrels and can generate 27 million liters of diesel, um, 11 million liters of kerosene, and 11 million, 9 million liters of jet fuel. So there's a lot, the whole lot out there that, 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 can, be, that can be produced, and that's at 650,000. So if it's getting 300,000, that's like almost 50% capacity. Uh, so it's still a lot of products. Uh, that that he can uh, refine, and I'm sure over the next few months we'll probably augment that with with product importation until we we'll get to a level where um, he can now start to serve the domestic market adequately. So, but that's 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 where we are on Dangote uh, Refinery. Yes, guys. So, by the way, you're listening to Follow the Money. Uh, we do this every Monday, eight to eight thirty, uh, on the station. And um, my name is Goodrey, um from Naira Metrics. Uh, if you miss any part of this, if you're just tuning in, of course, you can always get this on YouTube or on Spotify or anywhere you listen to podcasts. We're also, also going to have it there. It's currently streaming live on YouTube, by the way. Now, this week, um, the Bureau of Statistics is likely going to be releasing Nigeria's inflation numbers. Uh, we like to track this number because inflation is... Perhaps the most important thing out there, important data out there that we should all track because it affects us all the time. Uh, when you go to the supermarket and you want to buy things and you see that prices have changed, it's all inflation, right? And um, as of last month, inflation was at 26.7%. It's been climbing all year round. Over the last two years, it's no breather, no breather. Um, it's been going up. And up. This time last year, inflation was at 21.47%. Um, percent. Uh, it's currently 26.72%. And uh, the impression out there is that it's going to keep going up. In fact, there is a report from KPMG uh, that suggests inflation could climb to 30% by December 2023. Mm. Is that good news? Uh, it's not. It's not. And for a lot of people, uh, your own personal inflation is probably even more than that. Because a lot of the things that you bought this time last year is not 30% up. It's probably double or triple in price. Mm. Uh, but it's a different way. Inflation is calculated in a different way. Um, so not, not, not like it. Even though some of us argue that it's about time we sort of change how uh, inflation is calculated in Nigeria. Because it's all about a basket. So there's a basket of, of, of things that they put in there. And they assign weights to the things in those baskets. And then determine inflation rate based on, on based on the weighting. So, if your basket does not reflect what Nigerians spend money on on a regular basis, then it is likely that you might not really get, uh, you know, the right right inflation rate. That's that's one one line of argument, you know, that some people have. And so, uh, but nevertheless, uh, at at twenty six point seven two percent, it's the highest we've seen in in in, in decades in over almost two decades. We've not seen inflation rate this high uh, before, and it is likely going to go up. And as PwC have said, uh, they are looking at at 30%. 30%. By the way, um, let's also remember that as much as fuel prices have gone up, uh, electricity prices haven't gone up yet. It should have gone up, but it's currently being subsidized. And so imagine if that goes up, uh, the level of inflation rate is likely going to go up as well. And then a lot of companies haven't started reflecting prices yet uh, because... um, Exchange rate has, like I said earlier, has been depreciating over the last, over the last, uh, you know, few few weeks, and so some of the things that they probably bought when they made or when they, you know, took stock or inventory at say uh, eight fifty or nine hundred is now one two. So by the time you have to reflect that price, price are going to go up. So what we do, or what we what we tend to say at Naira Metrics is try as much as possible to front load your cost. If there are things that you got to buy now, don't wait till tomorrow. Just do it now mm-hmm. because prices keep going 
up and hardly stops. You don't delay gratification. It doesn't all. work in this economy that no, we're it running doesn't. now. Mm. It doesn't at all. all right. It doesn't. It's Follow the Morning here on Classic FM 97.3. That is, uh, should I call it the younger brother to business half? Ah, it's a rebrand. It's a spin-off. <laughs> so we have uh, Ugo during the studio, uh, just explaining the economic terms and uh, what to expect in the financial market. And this will be going on in the course of the week. Uh, I mean, the current uh, subsequent episodes, if you want to be a part of it as well, you can always ask your questions. Uh, tweet at us at Classic FM. And uh, the number to uh, send your questions to uh, is 0909. That is talking about our WhatsApp, 0909-217-2973. And uh, looks like time is saying, hmm. Yeah. Uh, and of course, if you have questions or topics or issues that you want us to discuss or anyone you want us to bring on this program, just to clarify some things, um, maths, economy and business and finance, uh, tweet at us at Naira Metrics. Uh, follow us across any channel at Naira Metrics. Also, check us out on our WhatsApp channel as well uh, at Naira Metrics. And, and we will, you know, of course, reach out to you. Uh, thanks, Bukola, for, for, for the... You, you. Yeah, I just wanted to ask, uh, yeah. with the inflation, though, when would we now reach a mark oh. that we need to stop? Because how long will the people... This is is this what we call galloping in France? Yes, it's been galloping for <laughs> for over a year now. Uh, you know the funny thing is that Nigerians how do you peg it? Nigerians are, are incredibly resilient. Um, you know, as a politician, I said out there that whatever happens, nobody does anything in Nigeria. Nigerians are resilient. Like we just tend to absorb all sorts of you know things, especially cost. So I don't know when it's going to end. Uh, people would say that there's something called base effects in inflation, which is mm. you know it's so high that it starts to drop, not because prices are actually going down, but because of um, the effect of it, the galloping inflation of, of periods past. Uh, I don't, so for inflation to sort of taper down, which is to start to reduce, um, you want to, first of all, see uh, a lot of uh, FX prices stabilize uh, a bit. It needs to stabilize. Uh, you need to also see the economy grow. GDP needs to grow as well, because when, when the economy is growing, then you know, prices tend to be, uh, you know, a lot more competitive than, than it currently is. Uh, and, of course, we also uh, need to see influx of foreign investment into the country. Uh, you need to see the government also break down a lot of barriers uh, that inhibit, uh, you know, uh, product uh, moving products across the country, uh, customs as well, uh, ease of doing business, all these things, uh, you know, logistics issues. These are the things that affect price of goods and services uh, in Nigeria. So once government starts to tackle all those infrastructural issues or structural issues, then you would see prices stabilize and then maybe start to go down. When that's going to happen, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, guys, uh, of course, uh, see, see you again next week, Monday, same time, 8 to 8.30. Uh, and don't forget to download our app at Nairometrics Play Store uh, and uh, iOS Store. Thanks, Bukola. Signing out. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day. The Classic Morning Show continues here. Stay with us.